So Andy Pants finally made a response video and I have had a bunch of people and I mean a bunch of people sending me this video and we're going to be checking it out today okay because you know this guy has had yet to make a really official response so I'm curious to see what he's going to say in this video I'm curious to see you know what he's going to debunk in this video now something else that I also noticed with this video is that he unlisted it right away like it only got 2,000 views and he also left a little message for us in the description just to further clarify I never performed a false copyright strike I I performed a perfectly legal copyright strike because the act man re-uploaded my video in its entirety. This is the definition of a copyright strike. Now immediately after doing this I talked with some members in my community and it's very frowned upon to do this in the case of a debate. I was not aware of this. When I learned this I immediately released the copyright strike. To say I did a false copyright strike is a lie. The dude re-uploaded my video. If you're gay and mad please do me a favor and unfollow me. Thanks. Also, I'm turning off comments on this video just to make the lib cucks mad. Sure you are, buddy. Sure you are. Now, I don't really feel like doing an intro for this video. Not even going to plug anything. We're just going to go ahead and get straight into the video because I've been wanting to check this out for a minute now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey, guys. So there's been an attempt recently by people like the Act Man and others to paint me as some kind of grifter who swaps sides for clout. Guys, I grew up in the Bible Belt. I was homeschooled until second grade. I used to argue with my teachers about creationism. Despite a few years as an idiot atheist, I have been 100% Christ-based for the last 20 years since I got saved. I voted for Trump twice and against Obama before that and then Bush before that. Guys, it doesn't get more based than Andy Pants. Ah uh, yes, nothing says based like shutting off your comments and unlisting your response video. Very Giga Chad move if I do say so myself. But look, guys, these comments against me now that are calling me a grifter and trying to expose me and all this, guys, it's because they're gay. They're homosexuals. They're part of the LGBTQ community. And people are so pissed right now, guys, that I'm speaking the truth. I'm like one of the few people on YouTube speaking the truth about this junk, and they hate me so much, and they want to discredit me so badly. Ah uh, yes, we're the ones trying to discredit you, even though all you have as a counter argument are insults. May I refer to our debate? Okay, well now we're just arguing like numbers and whatever. Now we're just like, well, well, ratio. Is that is that what we're using Twitter logic now? Brother, what is the cuck chair like? Because you sound like a leftist. But no, 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 guys, we're the ones who are discrediting him. So anybody that you see calling me a grifter, just look look in their bio. I guarantee you they have pronouns in their bio. So anyway, these attempts to paint me as some kind of a formerly liberal grifter are honestly hilarious. I also find it funny that these accusations come from people like the Act Man. The dude loves the new black protagonist in Assassin's Creed Shadows. He loves woke games. He regularly goes to pride parades, etc. Andy, you know what I find funny? How you claim to love diversity in video games. Yeah, any chance you can, you complain about diversity in video games. And now you're trying to put down somebody else for liking a game that has a black protagonist in it. So Andy, do you like diversity in video games or not? Because you're making things very confusing. So the way I'm being painted right now is somebody who used to have a channel where I was some kind of wokey. And then according to them, I flopped all of my views completely to take advantage of some kind of conser conservative algorithm. And I'm successful now because I changed all my views on things. The only problem is this reality exists in the minds of gay liberal men and doesn't exist in reality. <laughs> Just like the idea that there are more than two genders. The fact is I've always been against the woke garbage, whether it's my channel now or my old Xbox centric channel from before, I've always been against the woke stuff. Now I'm just speaking for myself here. I'm not really speaking for anybody else. But I never really said this guy was woke. I never said he used to be woke. Yes, I am aware he used to do anti woke content on his old channel. However, his anti woke content, at least from what I saw, his takes back then seemed a lot more reasonable. Like you could probably agree with him. However, nowadays, it's just a way more exaggerated, over the top anti woke personality. As far as I can tell, never existed on the Andy Xbox channel. That's why people say you're a grifter. But just to explain why I changed to a new channel. So I used to have an Xbox fanboy channel from around 2020 to 2024. Um, I actually at one point thought Xbox was more based than PlayStation. Uh, but the problem is that Xbox has proven itself to be even more woke than PlayStation. And so I abandoned Xbox and I abandoned that channel around 2024. This isn't me grifting or flip-flopping. Xbox changed their leadership 
it pissed me off and I nuked that channel because I pretty much don't agree with any of the videos I posted there anymore. Ah, uh, yes, but here's the issue, Andy. You nuked it right after Gamertron Show made his exposed video on you. So, Andy Pants, you mean to tell me within just a few days after Gamertron Show exposed you, you just decided, oh, Xbox is woke. I don't really like this content anymore. Nuke. Like, do you understand how crazy that timing is? Like, I just struggle to believe you've had this channel for years. But just as somebody talks about it, that's when you decide to delete it? Like, do you understand how that just doesn't really add up? Do you understand how that just doesn't really make sense? It would be like, let's say that you had a Star Wars fan channel and you talked about how much you love Star Wars. And then Kathleen Kennedy comes along and announces every single character in the Star Wars universe is gay now. Well, are you going to leave that channel up saying that Star Wars is awesome? No, you have every right to go take that channel down because the leadership of the brand has completely changed and you don't believe in the brand anymore. Yeah, just make sure to delete it right after it gets called out by another channel. And that's what happened to me with Xbox. I used to believe in Xbox. I don't anymore because they're just as woke as PlayStation. So um, when I started this new channel of mine in May 2024 or so, I actually just intended to have a quiet little channel where I talk about games. Um, if you go and look back, I talk about how much I love Gears of War. I talk about Mafia 3. I talk about Homefront the Revolution. And I intended to basically leave the console war behind me and just talk about games. Um, and then I think June or July, I made this little video about masculinity. And I woke up the next morning with 2.5 million views on this video as Mongold making a video about my video and 150,000 subscribers. You know, Andy Pants, I find it funny that you mentioned Asmongold because... There's this thing you see on YouTube a lot now, and it's called grifting, and you see people like Luke Stevens and Asmongold doing it a lot, and it just basically means these people have no integrity whatsoever. And it basically means you just regurgitate whatever the popular opinion to have right now is. So Andy, I ask you this. Because Asmongold reacted to your video, and as far as I can tell, he reacted positively, positively to it. Does that make him a grifter still? But let's get back to the grifting allegation. So if I am truly a grifter, then I should have never talked about anti-woke stuff on my old channel, right? Because I did this big flop, right? I completely changed my opinion, except, oops, I talked about anti-woke stuff constantly on my old Xbox channel. So I, here's some receipts for you. In January 2021, I made one of my first videos, and it was called The Political Bias of Gaming Journalists. In this video, I call out IGN, Kotaku, GameSpot, and Polygon for all being full of woke leftist soy boys. I'm happy to send a link uh, to this video, by, by the way, if you want it. So I called out Anita Sarkeesian for trying to blackmail CDPR. The main argument of the video is basically that video games have always been diverse and that leftists don't actually want diversity in games because they try to exclude religious and conservative people from their games. Um, I talk about how games used to be more offensive and games have become soft now, etc., etc. In April 2023, I made a video about the woke disaster Last of Us 2, and I specifically talk about how politics and wokeness ruin this game. In August 2023, I made a video called why aren't video games fun anymore? And I literally talk about how important God is and how I'm an evangelical Christian. Um, in August 2023, I also made several videos here about why I thought Starfield was really good. Um, and, and guys, now that I've had a year to keep playing the game, I'm honestly going to give Starfield a 7 now instead of an 8. And look, a lot of people in the anti-woke community that I'm a part of now want to say Starfield is woke, but it's really not. Um Sure, there's pronouns at the at the beginning of the game, but most of the game contains very little woke content. Did Andy Pants actually just say something reasonable for once? Oh my goodness, this guy actually used his brain for once. Let's go! This guy actually saw a game that was not that great and didn't immediately blame it on wokeness. You know what, Andy? I think you're taking some steps in the right direction here. I have actually gotten in fights with people on my channel over this. Starfield's biggest problem isn't the politics, but the fact that the characters in the dialogue have no edge whatsoever, ev whatsoever, and everybody is really boring. So just to be clear, I've never trashed Starfield in the present day, nor have I changed my position on that. I will say I used to like Starfield more, and as I've continued to play the game, I like it less because I just kind of see how bland and boring the dialogue is. But to say that Starfield is some kind of ridiculously woke game is is stupid, and it's you haven't played the game. 
Uh, in March 2024, I made a video entitled Woke Game Devs, calling out wokeness in the industry on my old channel. In April 2024, I made a video called Woke PlayStation, in which I mock the gay leftist trash that PlayStation has been producing. In April 2024, on my old channel, I made a video called How About We Keep Politics Out of Games. In April 2024, I made another video just called Woke, where I just call out wokeness. So as I hope you're beginning to see, I have never changed my position on wokeness and leftism. I have always hated gay trash in games, and I want to see this stuff removed. Well, unlucky for you, that's not going away anytime soon because, well, games nowadays appeal to a wide range of audiences. Also, just because something is woke doesn't automatically make it bad. Um, I recently had this punk kid on my uh, uh, stream named Walter in one of my live streams, and, and this kid showed up and he called me a grifter because I said I was only putting out videos about wokeism recently. According to him, you need to keep putting out videos you know will fail, otherwise you're not authentic. I explained to Walter, uh, my sweet summer child, you're a child, you have to grow up, and you need to learn a little bit about how the world works. I compare Walter to that band in high school that never got out of the small town you grew up in and were never successful, and the whole time they kept telling themselves, we're not successful because we never sold out. We're so pure. And it's like, guys, y'all are still playing in your basement. Nobody likes your music and you need to grow up. All right. So this is going to be an interesting segment of the video because I'm cool with Walter. As far as I can tell, me and him don't have any beef. But we did have a conversation the other day. Well, Walter and his friend, we did have a bit of a conversation the other day. And it was basically about my video where I called out Andy Pants for saying the N-word and basically showed his childish meltdown in my DMs after I confronted him. And Walter kind of brought up a kind of similar angle, not really exactly the same, but a somewhat similar angle against me. And we talked for like an hour, probably over an hour. And basically to just simplify and shorten down the angle, it was basically like, this video is kind of slop. How does this add to the story? And really all I got to say is, look, I'm not a storytelling channel. I don't make documentaries. I don't make super high quality documentaries, stories. I don't do that. I'm a commentary channel. I talk about things I find interesting. I make videos that I think my audience will like. And yeah, I'll admit it. I will make videos that I think are going to get views. Because at the end of the day, if you want to run a successful YouTube channel, your priority should be getting views, getting subscribers, building a community. And I feel like people will hear that and they'll think, oh, you don't have any passion. I would say that they're wrong because, well, sure, maybe my videos aren't the most passionate. Having the community, okay, having the people in the chat, having, you know, the Discord server, you know what I mean? Having, you know, just the community overall having your own little community your own little corner of the internet that is what i'm passionate about and i think a lot of people out there could probably relate to that and like i'm only just now realizing this because you know for years i've told myself no i just do youtube for the money and it was like there was always something that dragged me back to youtube every time i wanted to quit and i finally realized what it is i want a community i want my own little audience and sorry if i'm getting off topic here or like you know going on a bit of a side tangent but it's just like ever since i had that conversation with Walter and his friend it really made me think about like you know why do I do YouTube because it's not just the money I know it I know it's not just the money even though I told them that I know it's not just the money and to get back on topic here yes I do think Andy Pants is a grifter he is 100% a grifter there is no denying it he is a grifter however I think the notion that like you know every content creator needs to be like super duper passionate and needs to be putting in 10,000% like each video I think that notion is just a little bit silly and a little bit unrealistic and knowing Andy Pants and knowing how much he likes to lie and cover up things. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just bringing up this one talking point by Walter and like ignoring other talking points that Walter may have brought up. So yeah, Walter, if you want to give your side of the story, feel free to comment down below and uh, let everybody know. If you think I got anything wrong in this video or I misinterpreted what you meant in our conversation, then please let me know. Anyways, let's continue. The irony is, of course, that people like Walter don't actually have morality from something like God or Christianity, they just have this kind of like bullshit morality that they make up that they follow. Wait, 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 hang on. So you're saying Walter doesn't have any morals because like he's passionate about content creation? Are you fucking stupid? Um, but, but I also wanna use a, a painting metaphor here. So let's say you are an artist and you can do a still life, you can do portraits and you can do landscapes. Now let's say Target or Walmart comes to you and says, we wanna pay you a million dollars to do 500 landscape paintings. So I ask them, hey, can I do some portraits and still lifes for you? And they say, sorry, we're only interested in your landscape paintings. So I make 500 landscape paintings for them and I take the money. Am I any less of an artist because I focused on one type of painting and got paid for it? 
this is how I view the whole YouTube thing. YouTube naturally wants you to become a specialist and specify on a specific area and YouTube will pay you more money for that. And I'm happy to do that because I passionately believe what I'm talking about. Now, see, you almost had a point there, but then you went on to talk about how you passionately believe what you say, which I think we all know is BS. Andy, you don't gotta lie. The video is unlisted. Not many people are gonna see it anyways. You don't gotta lie, bro. We get it. You're a grifter. I have always passionately been a conservative and I've been against the woke liberal trash. Now, can I make videos about Gears of War and Mafia and Homefront the Revolution? Absolutely, but they're gonna get a fraction of the views of, of videos about the woke stuff. And so it's kind of like I've cultivated this audience and I've grown this audience and I agree with everything I'm saying and I've always agreed with what I'm saying. So I'm happy to focus on the kinds of videos that YouTube says are gonna be successful. So, all right, let's move on to some other allegations about me though. Um, so ironically, in that January 2021 video that I told you about that was ultra base, I called out the Wokies and I did have one unfortunate sentence in that video and it was this. I said, quote, the more gay, lesbian, trans, and female characters we have in games, the better. And all I can say is that I don't agree with that sentence anymore. This was almost five years ago now and I think I was much more of a centrist at the time. Um, but of course, the Ack Man, being the, the pride parade going dude that he is, completely takes this out of context to make it look like I'm some woke leftist or something when that's a complete lie and he knows it. But the act man is pretty good at lying and breaking the ninth commandment. So um, now what I will say is that I've never been anti-diversity in games. I'm not one of these people who says, oh, uh, games need to be all white people. I only want to see white people in games. I'm not going to say that. No, instead what you'll do is you'll just complain about diversity any minute you can. You're not going to say that you only want games to have only white people because let's be real here, that'd probably get you banned off of YouTube. But I just find it so weird how you just love diversity in video games, yet you always complain about diversity in video games. Like just, you, don't you see how that's a little bit weird? Like, don't you think that's a teensy bit little weird and a little bit kind of, you know, odd? Um, I think I've made this clear on my channel. I think it's great that in the old Gears of War games, all, all the guys don't have to be white. What I'm against and what I think all of us are against is against forced diversity. Like, if you look back at old games, games have always been diverse. What we are against is against this new push to ram diversity in an inauthentic and or, in, inorganic way. <clears throat> to just ram women into everything and gay people into everything and politics into everything. That's what we hate. To give you an example, I have no issue with the fact that Jackie in Cyberpunk is Latino, and I think it uh, actually adds a lot to his character. I have no issue with Coltrane being a black guy in Gears of War. I think it adds something to the game. When diversity is done well and it isn't super annoying, I think we all like it. What I'm against and what I think I've always been against is against forced woke tokenism and diversity that feels inauthentic and political and like propaganda. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. And hey, I agree with that. I think forced diversity and tokenism sucks. But see, here's the thing, and this is my issue with the whole anti-woke crowd, is that things like that will get prioritized over actual issues in games. They'll ignore, like, you know, the pricing issues with games, the gameplay with games, or they will acknowledge those problems and blame it on, in quotation marks, wokeness. And that's ultimately my issue with the whole anti-woke side of things. But like, example, Concord, right? You know, Andy Pants' audience blames it on, in quotation marks, wokeness. I blame it on poor pricing, terrible gameplay, and bad character character design. I think overall, that's not caused by, in quotation marks, woke developers. That's caused by bad developers. Woke does not automatically mean bad. Another clip the Ackman pulled about me showed me at one time saying that I thought Asmongold was a grifter and now he's become one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, I don't know what to say about this other than that my viewpoint on Asmongold changed. When I was first introduced to Asmon, I thought he was a grifter. Yeah, but as I watched him more, I realized the dude was really based. So I was wrong, and sometimes we're wrong about things, and we change. The one final thing people have been complaining about is that I copy-striked Ackman's video in which he re-uploaded our discussion. The funny thing about this is that I never called it a debate, by the way. It was just supposed to be an edgy discussion, and people are now calling it a debate. Um, anyway, this was honestly just a mistake, and as soon as I realized what I had done wrong, I corrected my error. YouTube informs you when somebody else has re-uploaded your content 
And my immediate thought was, why is he re-uploading our debate when it's already on my channel? Um, but I talked to a few people and this is very common. So basically, as soon as I realized my mistake, I apologized to the act man and I lifted the copyright. And look, I'd never done a debate before, so I didn't know this and it was just an honest mistake. Now, see, I would believe you, but there's a small issue. Uh, you see, you disabled the comments on that stream. You knew exactly why Actman re-uploaded the stream. And given your track record of just silencing people that criticize you, now you just expect us to be like, oh, it was just, it was an honest mistake. It wasn't anything serious. You know what I mean? Andy Pants, you know, he just, he made a little, a uh, little bit of an oopsie. You know what I mean? Now that's about where the video ends. He spends the rest of the video just talking about how Actman's a grifter and how he got paid to review some games, which I'm pretty sure he only knows about that because Walter told him about it. Yeah, that's basically just going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, make sure to check out the Discord server link in description. I'm always active on there. I always ping the Discord server when I upload new videos. Since YouTube notifications can be a bit buggy sometimes. So if any of that sounds of interest to you, make sure to check out the Discord server. Also, be sure to subscribe. We're almost at 3k subs. And yeah, guys, as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.